Let me tell you about Nana Redhue. She's this professional photographer who posts these beautiful lifestyle shots on her blog site. And I have a link in the description section below to the blog site. Well, these internet thieves stole her photographs from the blog site, posted them to their own Instagram accounts to make themselves money, and then had the gall to threaten her when she said to take them down. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been in a situation where your online photographs were stolen and then posted on Instagram without your knowledge? If so, I wanna help you. I wanna help Nana. In this Heart of the Matter video, I'm gonna give you my five tips on preventing the unauthorized use of your photos on Instagram. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video when I'm gonna give you my free legal order, which you can use to get your stolen photos taken down on Instagram. Okay, let's get to the heart of the matter. Hi everybody, I'm attorney Ian Corzine and welcome to the Heart of the Matter channel. Join me in my mission to make the law understandable and make it work for you. How do you join us? Well, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified every Wednesday when a new Heart of the Matter video comes out. So, how do you stop thieves from stealing your online photos? Let's get to the steps. Step number one, post an official copyright notice with your online photos. Wherever your internet photos appear on the internet, you need to post an official copyright notice next to them. You do this by placing the official copyright symbol, which is the C with a circle around it, the year in which the photographs were first published, and then your name, and then you place this underneath the photographs or to the side of the photographs. It should look like this. Historians believe that the circle C symbol originated in the early 1900s when painters complained to legislators that writing out the full word copyright made their paintings look ugly. So the legislators compromised and came up with the circle C symbol, and that way only a little portion of the painting would be affected by the assertion of the copyright. You know, the benefit of posting an official copyright notice is an assertion of your rights. You're basically saying to the world, this is my work of art and I will fight to protect it and this may have the effect of discouraging potential internet thieves from stealing your photographs and then posting them to their own Instagram accounts. Step number two, add watermarks to your photographs. I know, watermarks can look ugly, but if you're serious about protecting your rights to your own photographs on the internet, watermarks are absolutely necessary. I have an upcoming video on how to add watermarks to your photographs, and I'll link to that video in the description section below and add a card here. You know, the watermark originated in Italy in 1282. Back then, there were a lot of counterfeit documents in circulation and government officials wanted to stop that. So they came up with this invention called the dandy roll. They had these secret dandy rolls that only certain people had possession of. It was basically a metal cylinder with indentation on it and you could roll it over paper when it was wet and it would create these indentations that you could see through the light and would prove the genuineness of the document. What's great about watermarks for us attorneys is that if there is a photograph that has a watermark and then it, a person takes the watermark off, cuts it off, then that is definite proof of intent to steal your photographs that we can use to prove in a court of law. Before we get to the next steps, I'm curious, have you ever posted your own photograph online and later found out that that photograph has appeared on Instagram without your knowledge? If so, let me know in the comment section below. Step number three, take care in how you post your photographs on the internet. Before you post your photographs on Facebook, Instagram, or a blog site, it's really important to have some context. The internet remains the wild, wild west, and it's not just people in your home country that you have to worry about, it's the entire world. So be smart. If you're posting your photographs to Instagram or Facebook, make sure you've read the terms and conditions for that particular social media platform. For example, when you post to Facebook, let's say, are you assigning your rights to that photograph to that particular platform, or are you merely licensing your rights to that platform? You need to understand the difference. You need to know your rights before you post to a particular social media platform. I have an upcoming video on Instagram terms and conditions, which I will link in the description section below and put a card up here. You know, one other thing you can do is put some code in your blog site or your website so that it disables the ability for people to right click and download. I have a video that I found that teaches you how to do this and I'll link it in the description section below. This method is not foolproof, but it might prevent some more lightweight criminals from 
right clicking and then downloading your photographs only to post them to Instagram later. To protect your photographs, you also should become a member of pixie.com. It's a great website, I'll link to it down below, but the bottom line is for free, you could have this website search the internet for your unauthorized photos, find them, and then start the resolution process. It will actually help you get those photos taken down. Step number four, report the copyright infringement to Instagram. However, before you do that, you should really take some time and consider whether the person who took those photographs was taking them for a legitimate use. Figuring out whether or not someone used your photographs for a legitimate purpose requires a balancing of the right to free speech with the fair use doctrine. I'll put a link to my upcoming video on fair use in the description section below, and I'll also put a card here. Suffice it to say, you have to determine whether or not the person that took your photo was using it for some sort of fair use, like an educational purpose, parody, or satire. In Nana's case, however, we know that those dummies who took her photographs were not using it for a fair use. They were taking her photographs, stealing her photographs, putting them on Instagram, and then making money for themselves. So in Nana's case, an Instagram copyright report is necessary. I've placed a link to this particular report in the description section below. The Instagram copyright form is fairly easy to follow. You just click on the link that I'll give you in the description section and follow the prompts and you'll be able to take you through this report. But if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Also, if you don't get an immediate response from Instagram, you can also report the copyright violation using the Facebook copyright report form. I've placed a link in the description section below, but you may get better results with that. There are a lot more complaints made on Facebook than Instagram, and they have a larger team to deal with these complaints. Step number five, send a cease and desist letter to the copyright infringer. The final step in preventing trolls from stealing your photographs and putting them on Instagram is to send them directly a cease and desist letter. The cease and desist letter is necessary to officially inform these Instagram pirates that they have violated your copyright and that they need to take down your photographs immediately. Another effective procedure involves utilizing the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Under this statute, you can issue what's called a DMCA takedown notice and get your photographs taken down. I will place a link to my upcoming video on DMCA takedown notices in the description section below, and I'll also place a card here. But before you use the DMCA, you should download my free cease and desist letter to show these turkeys, these guys that have stolen your photographs, that you mean business. I'll put a link to this free template in the description section below. So now we've discussed the five steps in preventing the unauthorized use of your photographs on Instagram. And Nana, if you're watching, I hope I've given you some concrete steps that you can follow so that you can get those photographs, those beautiful photographs that you took taken down from those Instagram accounts. Do you have any questions or thoughts about these internet pirates stealing your photos and then putting them on Instagram? If so, I wanna hear about it. Put it in the comment section below. Also, have you run into any problems with social media platforms not taking down your photos that were stolen from you? If so, please let me know about the situation in the comments section below. I wanna help you. I wanna stop the practice of people stealing your photos and then putting them on Instagram for their own gain. If you like this video, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up. And also, if you wanna join our community, please subscribe, hit the bell button, and you'll be notified every Wednesday when a new Heart of the Matter video comes out. And again, for my free template, cease and desist letter, just click the link in the description section below. One more thing, be sure and check out the Heart of the Matter Facebook group. It's a great forum where we delve into the subjects we discuss in our videos in more detail. I'd love to see you there. Okay, you know the basics of copyright law, why don't you check out my new video on fair use next?